Hello and welcome to the Ace Destroyer. This will be a minute by minute overview of what happened from the 20th of December until the 24th of December 1944 in the northern shoulder of the Ardennes. We'll begin on the 20th of December, but here's what happened the day before. Early in the morning of the 19th, Kampfgruppe Piper attacked and captured Stumont. Later that day, the Kampfgruppe was stopped at the Stumont station. Kampfgruppe Knittel was positioned in Stavelou, and Kampfgruppe Hansen was ordered to liberate Piper in the Stumont Laglaise pocket. US Task Force Harrison, consisting of the 119th Infantry Regiment, 30th Infantry Division, and the 740th Tank Brigade, stroke Piper's perimeter at the Stumont Sanatorium saint Edouard at around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The building came into US hands. In a bloody fight that followed throughout the rest of the day, the building traded hands multiple times. The Germans regained control after a successful night attack. The Americans lost a couple of tanks in the process. Stumont was defended by a handful of tanks, 7th Company of the SS Panzergrenadier Regiment 2, 12th Company Fallschirmjäger Regiment, 9th Pioniere SS Panzer Regiment 1, and some other smaller units. The US foothold in the village was defended by A, B and C Company of the 119th Infantry Regiment, 30th Infantry Division. US Task Force Lovelady from the 3rd Armored Division ambushed a German convoy, mainly 1st Company SS Panzer Artillerie Regiment 1, with artillery reinforcements for Piper at around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The American Shermans made quick work of the convoy. The Germans had nowhere to go. After the convoy was dealt with, the Americans moved further along the N33 road towards the Chateau Petit where the German HQ was located. That was how defended by some anti-tank guns and the King Tiger 132, at that time commanded by SS Oberschaft Führer Brandt. A total of five to six Shermans were destroyed. Brandt and the King Tiger killed one. This was around 15 hours 50. In the early afternoon, US forces tried to take Moulin Maréchal in La Glaise which was defended by a couple of Germans and some armoured vehicles. The US Rec A team ran into German contacts and fell back. In the meantime, Task Force McGeorge closed in on the heavily defended village. They lost around four Sherman tanks that day. The Germans had dug in well around Laglise and the Maréchal Mill. When the Americans attacked again the next day, the German forces at the mill retreated back towards Laglise. The US 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 82nd Airborne Division attacked Chenu. Companies B and C were the attacking companies. As soon as they came out of the forest onto the fields, they came under heavy fire from not only machine guns and small arms fire, but also from 20mm flak trucks that were set up in the town and the fields next to the small hamlet. German units in this sector were mainly companies of the SS Panzergrenadier Regiment 2, and the Leichters Flaksturm Abteilung 84. Casualties were very high on the US side. After a couple of hours of heavy fighting it became clear that the Germans weren't giving up the town that easily. A large hand-to-hand -hand combat occurred during the night. Staff Sergeant Walsh of C Company reorganized some of the remaining men of C Company to charge another 20mm cannon. They were stopped by heavy fire, but Staff Sergeant Walsh crept closer until he could toss a grenade because he was wounded, he couldn't pull the pin out, so he crept back to his men, so one of them could pull the pin out. Once that happened, Walsh crept back to the 20mm, destroying the cannon. Walsh would continue to lead his men until he collapsed of blood loss and exhaustion. Walsh would later receive the DSC for his actions in Chenu. By nightfall, after a bloody fight, the paratroopers only managed to grab a toehold in the town. The rest of the hamlet had to be taken the next day.
In the morning of the 21st, German forces attacked a U.S. bridgehead in the heights east of Trois-Ponts. The American forces had crossed the Saam River in the early morning and the day before. It was defended by E Company, 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment. After a while, E Company got overwhelmed by the German forces, who were a part of Kampfgruppe Knittel's 4th Company, SS Panzer Aufklärung Abteilung 1, and who were supported by armoured vehicles. US command threw in a part of F Company to help secure the bridgehead. By noon, members of another Kampfgruppe joined the fight. SS Panzer Grenadier Regiment 1 von, from Kampfgruppe Hansen joined the fight. Just before 4 o'clock in the afternoon, the paratroopers had to retreat off the high ground east of Trois-Ponts after a costly battle. The bridge over the River Sam had however been blown by members of the 51st Engineer Combat Battalion at around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Hansen couldn't cross the bridge to relieve Piper. He had to find another bridge, rather sooner than later. At a quarter before 10 in the morning, LNI Company of the 117th Infantry Regiment, 30th Infantry Division, attacked Kampfgruppe Knittel from the north, in the villages of Ster and Renardement. This happened at the same time as the attack in Trois-Ponts. Ster was only poorly defended and fell into US hands at around a quarter past 12. Renardement was more of a problem. It was defended by the SS Panzeraufklärungsabteilung 1. By two o'clock in the afternoon, Renard Mont still wasn't taken. At that time, parts of Task Force Love Lady, mostly 33rd Armoured Regiment, 3rd Armoured Division, closed in on the village southeast of Renard Mont, being Parfondrui. The Task Force captured the village just before four o'clock in the afternoon. After they captured Parfondrui, they sent a couple of tanks to help out I Company, which was still fighting for Renard Mont. By a quarter before five, all three villages northwest of Stavlo were in U.S. hands. Kampfgruppe Knittel had received a blow. The problem for the Americans in the Ardennes was that they needed tanks to secure villages. Nearly every house was built out of stone, which can't be destroyed by a small arms fire. Fighting also continued for the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment at Chenu. Throughout the day, a handful of German counterattacks were repelled, and heavy German mortar fire was raining in on the small village. By 5 o'clock in the afternoon, the 504th had finally secured the town. It had, however, cost the 504th dearly. In Company B, not a single officer was left, and only 18 men made it out fine. In C Company, three officers and 38 men made it out fine out of the 119. Task Force McGeorge attacked the village of La Glaise yet again. They didn't get that much closer to the city centre and the attack stalled. The Germans had, like I said, dug in well around the village. In the north, the axis of attack for Task Force McGeorge was defended by a couple of companies of the SS Panzer Grenadier Regiment 2, mainly the 10th, 11th and 12th. These companies were, however, heavily battered. Tanks were spread across the village, both engineer companies being the 9th pioneers of the SS Panzer Regiment 1 and the 3rd company from the SS Panzer Pioneer Battalion were located in the south of the village. Both King Tigers at the Verimont farm, Tigers 221 commanded by SS Untersturmführer Georg Handusch, 
and 213, now commanded by SS Obersturmführer Wilhelm Dollinger, opened fire upon US tanks of Task Force McGeorge and Lovelady that were approaching from Rouen. The fire was ineffective as no US tanks were knocked out. After the Tiger IIs fired, the US forces fired back at both King Tigers, knocking out both tanks after several hits. One Sherman shot the muzzle brake of Tiger 213 clean off. Wilhelm Dollinger was wounded to the head and sought cover in the Virimont farm cellar. At around 1 in the afternoon, members of the 119th Infantry Regiment attacked Stumont yet again. A, B and C Company attacked near the sanatorium. K and L Company attacked from the north and more to the east. Members of E and G Company and a Major Macon attacked the Germans near Chateau de Foitcourt through the forest. The castle, or chateau, was at that time the command post of Piper and Puchka, who was second in command. At five o'clock in the afternoon, Major Macon was captured and taken prisoner by the Germans. He was moved to La Glaise. Because the bridge at Trois Ponts was blown earlier that day, Hansen had to find a new bridge to relieve the encircled Kampfgruppe Piper. The next bridge he found was the one at Rochelinval, south of Trois Ponts. The bridge at Rochelinval was defended by I Company, 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment. The German infantry, supported by armour, attacked at 5.30 in the evening. As soon as the Germans got close to the bridge, members of the 307th Airborne Engineer Battalion blew it up. Hansen's last hope on relieving Kampfgruppe Piper now plunged into the river Salm. The Germans were furious and fired lots of rounds at the other side of the river at the paratroopers' positions before retreating back. Despite being outnumbered, Kampfgruppe Piper repelled lots of American attacks in Stumont. But with the attack of Captain Macon right in the middle of both towns Stumont and Laglaise, Piper made the decision that all members at Stumont had to retreat towards Laglaise. A Yacht Panzer 470 drove on the Petit Spare Bridge when it all out of a sudden collapsed under the weight making it nearly impossible to cross the river. Tiger 334 and two Panzer IVs of the Sechster Kompanie SS Panzer Regiment 1 made contact with advancing enemy troops on the road to Bourgoumont. After knocking out a Sherman, the Tiger is hit by a fusillade of American tanks, damaging the right drive sprocket. The crew was forced to bail out and escape to Laglaise. The supporting infantry took up positions in the town and only retreated back the next day. Kampfgruppe Hansen made a last ditch assault trying to liberate Piper. They attacked from a forest north of Kor. After a costly battle, the Germans got a hold on the Kor station and the vicinity of the nearby US aid post. With the capture of the three villages northwest of Stavlo, the door towards Stavlo itself was wide open. The American forces, mostly A Company, 117th Infantry Regiment, supported by tanks, attacked the remaining German positions along the main road at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. One of these German positions was the house of the Stavlo massacre. More than 100 civilians were murdered in the garden of one of the houses by members of Kampfgruppe Knittel's SS Panzeraufklärung Abteilung 1. The house itself was occupied by the Germans, also members from the SS Panzeraufklärung Abteilung 1, but not the ones who massacred the civilians. The main road was defended by what Knittel himself said as Company Koblenz and the attached Pionierzug and Stabskompanie. By 2.30 in the afternoon, posi all the positions were captured. Knittel had lost his hand on Stavlo.
Because the Germans retreated, Stumont was left undefended. Members of the 119th Infantry Regiment, 30th Infantry Division, secured the entirety of the town at around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. They were now pressing on towards the Chateau de Foitcourt. US forces arrived at the chateau a couple of hours later. They found the chateau littered with German wounded and dead, but also some US soldiers that were taken prisoner or were wounded were found in the chateau. They all had to be evacuated. This happened somewhere before midnight. The Americans tried to make a combined armor and infantry push. The Shermans were from the 33rd Armored Regiment, the infantry came from Company K, 119th Infantry Regiment. The attack was stopped when two Panthers, 201 at the Osecurie de la Reine Hotel and 221 in a field east of the village, destroyed two Shermans. The American attack was halted. The Luftwaffe tried to rearm Kampfgruppe Piper, but due to bad organization this failed. Containers full of supplies were dropped on US positions, or were dropped in no man's land where nobody could get them. The encircled Germans couldn't rearm, leaving them with nearly to no ammo, food, water and other supplies. Piper was finally granted permission to break out of the encirclement. Leaving a small rearguard force to hold off the Americans, Piper's group of around 800 men withdraws, leaving behind just more than 100 vehicles, including 6 King Tigers and around 12 Panther tanks. To finish, the entire northern shoulder at the end of each day, at the exact same time as Piper retreated, Montgomery ordered the retreat for almost the entire 82nd Airborne Division. That would bite them in the ass later in the offensive. The Ardennes campaign hadn't worked out well for the Kampfgruppe. The main objective was not reached and the casualties were sky high. The massacres didn't help either with the image of the SS. Some Wehrmacht men were scared to be captured along with the SS men. The Ardennes campaign was a failure. This was the Exit Dryer. I hope you've enjoyed this little documentary. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Cheers!